I hope you're ready today <coughs> for, the, for the teaching, not only for your mind, but for your spirit. It's so great to meet and to learn from the Word of God. This is possibly the greatest learning hour in the history of mankind. That there are more people that know the Word of God at this moment than I ever knew the Word of God at any one time in history. We are so delighted to be alive when people are learning. There was a time when people said, well, I'll have to ask my minister, I have to ask my rabbi, I have to ask my priest. That day is gone. People are thinking spiritually for themselves today. Uh, people are taking the Word of God and studying it and coming up with answers today that they, that they had not previously had. And we thank God for such a magnificent hour that we live in today. It most certainly is glorious. We are proceeding with a group of studies at this time that really they are world changers. That's the only way you could say it. They are world changers. When we get to know the right attitude toward the enemies of the gospel, and who are the enemies of the gospel? In Ephesians chapter 6, it tells us that we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the darkness of this world. You see, when we understand who our enemy is and how to deal with him, we are victorious. We're only defeated in ignorance, in ignorance, you see. So when we don't know the truth, when we don't know who we are, when we don't know what our abilities are, when we don't know what God can do, then we can be defeated. But <laughs> when we are saturated in truth, no one of the, the, the Word of God says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The Word of God will saturate you in power and victory and anointing that you cannot receive from any other source. We're studying out of this special syllabus. We do hope that you will please uh, re receive your copy of it and study from it. And let this not be the ultimate, let this be the beginning point. Take these, and we have left plenty of room here for notes. Continue in there and until you understand the greatest truths of the Word of God in every way that you should. Remember, and not only can you get this written, as, as I am teaching you from the book, from my notes, you can receive those, but, and many ministers use these from their pulpits from, as their sermons, because they're already laid out for them uh, beautifully. You can get your audio tape uh, that you can uh, uh, listen to it again and again. Sometimes it's about the third time through that the great truths begin to emerge. Uh, you can get your videotape, play it on your own, on, on your own TV set there in, in your house, uh, on half-inch uh, tape or any other way that you wish it. Uh, you can get a Bible class going, and we even give you uh, examinations uh, that you can give to your students there, and you can start your own school. Uh, this is the hour. This is the hour to do great and beautiful and wonderful things in God. I hope you're ready. I do hope you are ready. Uh, now, in uh, lesson 16, this means that we have now completed 15 lessons just in this series here uh, on principalities and powers. And now we have come to lesson 16, and we're dealing with something uh, that I'm afraid a lot of people didn't know about. And maybe if I had not have lived overseas, maybe if I had not lived overseas for so much of my life in so many heathen countries, I, I, I wouldn't have understood this. But you see, uh, in, in the pagan homes overseas, they, they all have a, a little uh, area of their house that is their worship place. It's their little miniature temple. Sometimes it's in the house, uh, sometimes it's in the yard. Uh, but the, they, they have their worship spot, and they have a Buddha up there, or a Confucius up there, or, or, or some idol of theirs there, or, or something that has, a, they think, a magic and power there. And they go and burn incense there, and they leave food there, and the rats eat it, but they think the spirits did it. And, and so uh, uh, these become their emblems, emblems, you know, of their, of their spirits that they worship and serve. Now, I wish to teach you in this lesson destroying the emblems of demon power. I can't, I can't tell you the consternation in my heart when I see a heathen, pagan deity sitting on a shelf in the United States of America in a Christian home. Oh, it's a whatnot. You better believe it's a whatnot. You don't know what not you've gotten into. And you better believe that. And you may better understand that. God warns His people against all supernaturalism that is not of Him. 
There are two sources of supernaturalism. One is the Almighty God, which is positive. One is the devil, which is negative, you see. There are two areas of supernaturalism. There are, are, there are the one is the demon power and the other is God's power. And anything related to demon power should have no relationship to a Christian home or to a Christian person. You shouldn't wear it around your neck and you shouldn't wear it on your body. Not only put it in your home. The Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10 and 19, now this is important, open your Bible there, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 19. Paul said, What say I then, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? I say that the things which the Gentiles, that's the nations other than Jews, that what they sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils. It's, 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 this is in your Bible too. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 19. They sacrifice to devils and not to God, and I would not that you have fellowship with devils. Isn't that something? Fellowship with devils. If you put in your home the emblems of the demons uh, of, from other lands, then you are having fellowship with what they have fellowship with. You got it in your own house. You dust it off every day. And the first thing you know, you'll, you'll, you'll pass by it and make a little, a little movement toward it. And you'll say, help me. You know? Yeah. The, the, devil, the devil is a deceiving devil. He don't ever stop. He, he, he just keeps leading you further and further. The apostle says that the idols are nothing of themselves. Even the offering is nothing of itself. But behind the idol and behind the off offering is a spirit. And that spirit craves to be worshipped, you see. So the idol is only a symbol. Behind that symbol is the devil's power. I've just said a big thing. And, 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 and there are millions of American homes that need to be cleaned out now. And they get this rubbish out of your home. And I'm going to give you some reasons for it here in this lesson. So just stick with me uh, real, real close, please. God has symbols of his power. So, so there are divine symbols. In the Old Testament, there was the Ark of God. It was a symbol of the presence of the Most High God. This, uh, this Ark was a symbol of God's presence to the people of Israel. It was a symbol of His power. So the Ark of God was placed in an area called the Holy of Holies. And above the Ark was the Shekinah glory, which was the presence of the living God. It was a light, unlike any human light. There were no candles in that room. There were no windows in that room. There was no artificial light of any kind in the Holy of Holies. And, let, and let, yet there was light there, God's light. God's power was there. So when the light was gone, then they knew that the presence of God was gone from that place. And so there are divine symbols. There are spiritual symbols, you see, and those we, we believe in and those we accept. But the heathen do not understand God's power. In 1 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 4, when the Philistines captured the ark of God, seeing that it was a religious relic, they placed it in their own temple. <laughs> they didn't know anything about it. The next morning, their own god, Dagon, had fallen down on his face, broken to pieces, and destroyed before the presence of the symbolic ark. Symbolic ark. It was destroyed. And so the, the devil's symbols cannot stand up before the divine symbols of God. It's not possible. Uh, that which is in us is greater than that which is in the world. The power of God is far greater than that of the power of the devil. The devil has symbols of his power. Christians should never have the symbols of the devil's power in their possessions at all. These symbols of the devil's power may have strengthened them that you don't know anything about. You see? That in that symbol of the devil's power, that spirit has accompanied it. The heathen use all kinds of symbols in their worship. The witch doctors, they make dolls, usually ugly dolls. They stick pins in those dolls, and through these dolls they can cause injury and sometimes death at a distance uh, to their enemies. And these dolls become symbols of evil practice. And I've seen people with these little old dolls stuck up in their home that they had brought back from overseas. So, oh, this is a witch doctor's doll. You better leave it where it was. <laughs> you better leave it where it was. All voodoo religions have artifacts, and they have numerous good luck charms. Now, your good luck charms, they didn't come from God. They came from the other source. They have numerous good luck charms. 
They have all kinds of symbols which refer to the power of the devil, of how they can keep free, and so forth. Now, when you know that, God doesn't want you to have anything to do with them. The Lord Jesus told, told a woman, says, they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. They must worship him in spirit and in truth. We don't need any of the symbols of the devil to worship God. We worship God in spirit and in truth. I had an e editor of our magazine here, uh, and uh, uh, he was an e English man, and he, he told me that he was teaching in a Bible college in London. And uh, he had a special class that took place at 8 o'clock in the morning, just after breakfast, and, and that he had 30 or 40 students. And he said they'd go to sleep in class. One, two, three, four, five, eight, ten. And he said, well, well <laughs> it couldn't be my dull teaching. They've just had breakfast. They just got out of bed. And here they go to sleep when I'm teaching in, in this class. And he began to pray about it. He said, now, Lord, I don't understand. I'm a good teacher. I teach the Word. And these young people, they go to sleep while I'm teaching. And he told me personally, he said, God spoke to him and said, search the classroom. So he went in there when there was nobody there, and he went over every inch of the big classroom. He found upon a little shelf there a cobra, a cobra snake made out of metal, and it stood about this high and was a coiled cobra with the head coming out like this. And God spoke to him and said, this was taken from a temple in northern India where they worship the cobra, and said it was deserted. And they, they came out of it, gave it to the missionary, and that has been a gift to this school. Huh. And says that sleeping spirit there comes over these people from that cobra, a symbol of the devil's power there in North India. He didn't ask anybody. He took that he took that bronze cobra about this high, took it into the backyard of the Bible college, dug a hole, and buried it. He said, Brother Sumrall, before God in heaven, never another student went to sleep in that class. That's what I mean about destroying the symbols of the devil. You may be having problems in your home, and you don't know why. You better clean up your house. I don't think it's right to, to have these these, these, these terrible records in your house. And I don't think you should per permit your children to have them in your house, uh, that, that have the backward language that they can talk to the devil through playing it backwards. I don't think that you should have these, uh, the, the, these, uh, the, these records that are, that are deep in the mysticism and, and deep in the groaning and deep in the demon uh, atmosphere. I don't think they should even be in your house. You should clean your house up and, and, and take them out, destroy them. And, and that the symbols of the devil's power has no place in a house, in a house that belongs to God, in a house where we are worshiping God. When I was in a foreign land, China, I was in a very large uh, Buddhist temple. It was called the Temple of Ten Thousand Gods. That was the name of it, and and they they supposedly had ten thousand idols in that one enormous temple. I didn't count them all. <laughs> there were enough of them. There were thousands. And, and possibly 10,000. In the center of this thing was a Buddha. Oh, he must have been 25 uh, foot, foot high or 30, 35 foot high. An enormous Buddha. At the base of it was very, very big. A, a metal, a metal Buddha. It cost a lot of money, a lot. Of, this was a gorgeous temple. <laughs> and I was looking all through it and, and the, the, the temple there. And with my interpreter, I called one of the priests over. I said, would you, uh, would you come over here? And, and I said, now, now, now there's this Buddha here, and it, it's made of metal. And I, down in front, I, you've got candles, and you've got food down there. And I says, now, you, you know, sir, that that thing is made of metal. What can it do for you? He didn't get hurt. He just smiled and says, well, I, if, I'll explain it to you if you want me to. I said, well, I'm, I'm ready. He said, walk with me. And we went around to the back of this giant Buddha, and there was a hole you know, about this big. He says, see that hole? He says, now the spirit of this Buddha is not here right now. He says, he's possibly off in the mountains or wherever he wants to be. But he said, if I kneel in front of this Buddha and I become deadly earnest in prayer 
and I burn my incense, and I burn these candles, and I offer my food. It says, he comes out of those mountains. He comes through that hole inside of there, and I know when he's there, and he directs me. He tells me what to do. Oh, I said, wait, 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 wait. And that's not the idol at all. Oh, he says, no, the idol is nothing. He said, it is the spirit that's inside of this idol. Can you see now that when you bring one of these things into your home, that you are bringing a symbol of demon power into your house, and they should not be there. They should, a lot of these little dolls you buy, you better look at them again. Those that look like Chinese, so forth, they're gods. They're gods that are worshiped over there. <laughs> I don't see how they could foist them off on, 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 on American people to make pretty little knickknacks uh, for, your, for your shelf when they are selling you, uh, they're selling you their gods. And, and you have the emblems then of demon religion upon your shelf. Then you get sick, and you have problems, you have sorrows, you have quarrelings, and you say, where did it all come from? Clean up your house. God wants our houses to be clean in Jesus' name. And I am so very, very sure of that. All right. Uh, not only is it in, in, in that type of a thing, but I was away up in the, in the headhunter country in, in, the, in Luzon, in the Philippines. And I, I went back to some of the tribes. I built six churches back there for the tribes people. And I went back to dedicate uh, one of those churches. And in this tribe, uh, we went as far as the road went, then we got off and we walked, and we walked for many hours to get to this place. And I'd built a plain little building. Only cost two or three thousand dollars. It just had to do with, with walls, uh, you know, some wood for the inside structure, and then some walls made of metal, and a roof made of metal and a cement floor. I mean, so it was a very simple building, but it was still the best building in their tribe. But it didn't cost a lot of money. And I went to dedicate uh, this, this little building and to preach for them for two or three nights up there. Now, now two or three things happened uh, in, among those tribes people. Uh, number one was uh, that their, their communication uh, with the other world, with the demon world, was a tree. Was a tree. Now, I had seen this in China, where they, where they, where they uh, worship trees and, and where they uh, 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 burnt incense to trees, but this was different. In this tree, I wish I had taken a picture of it. Of course, they may not have let me either. I don't know. Uh, but I, almost every two or three inches of it was a turn and a crook and a knot. I have never seen a tree so hurt as that tree. Now, this was a luxuriant part of the world. It's tropical. All around me were trees loaded, loaded with fruit and, 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 and with leaves. This tree had no leaf of any kind. It was bare from the bottom to the top. And it was the most crooked thing, gnarled. I'd never seen a tree that I felt so sorry for as that tree. Down in front of it was the altar. They had candles burning there, had food there for the spirits. And I said, what in the world is this? They said that the spirits that rule our tribe, this is their home. They live in this tree. And so when we come to worship, we come to the tree and worship. And, and I looked at it with, with disbelief. I said, how could it be? How could it be? And the Lord began to speak to me and said, the, the, the devil, the devil, he can make his abode in a tree as well as he can a big Buddha, you know, a big idol. It's, it's, as easy as he can, a Confucius idol or any of the other idols, uh, this tree is another symbol of his power. And they get something here. When there's nobody here praying, the tree is another tree. But when they kneel down to worship, uh, then they are face to face with their gods, you see? And, and so there are symbols of demon power in the world. And we as Christians should stay away from them. And we don't need any symbols. Uh, we, we don't. There are no holy pictures. There are no holy images. There are no such things. Jesus himself said, they that worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, only in spirit. We worship God in our spirits and we worship him in our integrity. In truth, uh, we worship him. And we deny the devil any privileges and we will not contaminate. Oh, I could tell you, I could tell you so many things. You know, you know, in Paul's day, they, they, went, they went right out. They, they went right out and burned all these symbols of the demon power. In Acts chapter 19, they burnt the whole thing and got rid of them. 
And the church today must learn uh, to do the same. In the, in the Philippines, I, I prayed for a girl named Clarita uh, Villanueva. Uh, uh, she, was, she was possessed of the devil, very strong, uh, possessed of the devil. And that devil would bite her body and leave deep tooth marks in her body. One of the strangest things about that girl was a, a little string around her neck and a wooden cross on the end of it. Now, when she was possessed, oh, she couldn't keep her hands off that little old wooden cross. It just couldn't keep her hands off of it. Uh, it, it just wallowing around on that little wooden cross about this big. There was one time when she said she had lost it. And she found it in the pocket of, of the chief jailer. He's the one that died. She said, uh, I've lost my cross, lost my cross. And he said, well, I don't know where it is. You, you had it. It's in your pocket. He says, well, it isn't. I've never touched it. And, and, and he reached into his pocket. And there it was. He does, does, has no idea how it got into there. And that same man kicked her. And she said, you will die. And four days later, uh, he, was, he was dead. But she was using that strange little cross as a communication between her and the spirit world of evil, of evil. Imagine using Christ's cross <laughs> as a symbol, you see, uh, of something that it was her communication with the devil was through that little cross. I have never seen anything just like that in my life. But when, when you see it for yourself, uh, there, is no, there, there is no question, no question about it. On page 53, if you're following me, uh, I, I tell you the story there of, of when I was in, Dine in Indonesia. Now, I was in the home of a man uh, with, with, with Reverend Howard Carter. And after he got in his home, uh, he, was, he was a wealthy man on the plantation. And uh, when we got into the home, uh, we were told by his wife, my husband has seven devils. And she began to tell us the story, and we could hardly believe it. They wouldn't permit her to sleep with him in bed. They would throw her out of the bed when his hands were like this and not touching her. They would throw her onto the floor. They would pinch her body till there would be large blue spots and bruise spots on her body. They would threaten her in a loud language that they would kill her if she didn't uh, stay away from him. She took, well, when he went to work, he had a large plantation, a banana plantation. Uh, and when he was going out in his truck uh, out through the plantation, she took us into the bedroom and opened the door. And there hung a silver dagger by a thing that looked like a thread uh, from the top. And down below was a place to burn incense. She said, this dagger is his communication with those demons. Since he comes in here, he opens this wardrobe up, and the only thing in there is a silver, this silver dagger. And he begins to mumble and, and talk. And these spirits come, and he communicates with them through this silver dagger. What I'm trying to show you is that the devil has many ways of making a thing uh, uh, a symbol of his power. You see, uh, that could have been used in many other ways, but it was used in worship, which made it different from any other dagger that there was anywhere about. Now, this, this woman in Washington, D.C. named Jeannie Dixon, uh, she, she uh, uh, uses a crystal ball and she uh, uses cards in order to uh, prognosticate uh, the, the future of politicians and other people in Washington, D.C. In order to know one's future or anything about them, Mrs. Dixon uses her crystal ball. That ball has become a symbol to her of conjuring up a strange power to tell you things that you would not know other, otherwise. You might be using a Ouija board in your house, or you might be using professional playing cards in your house. Uh, I don't know what you may have in your house uh, in this lesson, I am urging you in the name of our Savior to rid yourself of any, any of these, you might call them curios. I, I don't know what you might call them. You might call them games. But I'm assuring you that if the devil has any place in them at all, any worship in them at all, that you must get yourself rid of those things because you must be free from all of the devil's power. In Acts 19 and 19, I referred to you a few moments ago. It says, many of them which use curious arts have brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them 50,000 pieces of silver. This was a fortune. At that time, 30 pieces of silver was the price of a slave. 
This means that, that with 50,000 pieces of silver, they could have bought 1,666 and two-thirds slaves. And that's how big it was. There was no, there was possibly no man in the empire so wealthy. And they burned all that stuff because they said, we must destroy the symbols of demon power. 